Baxter might be the most unique movie I've ever seen. I can confidently say that I've never watched anything quite like it. This makes me sad because for everyone in my film history class that has no choice whether or not to watch this, I'm literally about to spoil a ton of great content for you. Sorry. Anyhow, it was made in 1989 and was directed by Jerome Boyvin, who directed such classics as Barjo and uh, um, uh, other stuff. This film revolves around a sociopathic and slightly horny bull terrier named Baxter who decides to tell you about his life and his different owners. We can hear his thoughts in the form of monologues read in a super creepy voice. Seriously, just listen to this. Essayez de comprendre ces choses étonnantes qu'ils font parfois. J'ai toujours pensé que j'avais beaucoup à apprendre des humains. Weird, right? Needless to say, this is a very stereotypically French film, however, that's definitely not a bad thing. It's really cool to see oddball movies like this because I know it's something I would never see being produced in America and I think it's so cool that it exists. I mean, a film that explores the nature of a human's relationship with dogs in a way that isn't totally fluffy or a coming of age adventure. That's completely unheard of, which to me makes it a must watch. Not to mention the story is being told by Baxter, a dog who was merely an observer of humans. He's a voyeur to our world and has zero understanding of human emotion or decision making, and Jerome Boyvin always keeps this in mind. Every action is objective to him and either benefits him or inconveniences him. I could go on and on about the themes and writing in this movie, but I need to get on to how three elements of this film support the themes and writing. Those would be the sound, the narrative structure, and how both of them come together and add to the mise-en-scene. Let's start with sound. If I'm being completely honest, not much about the sound really stuck out to me. No consistent patterns of music or sounds that reflected the story, but there were a couple moments that piqued my interest. The first being the sound of nature. Baxter expresses that he's only happy when he's outdoors. There's a moment when he's with his second owners who are much more fair and loving than the first and they're outside. It's a very surreal experience for Baxter because he hasn't felt this kind of connection to an owner in his entire life. He's walking with her around the field and it's just peaceful. The wind, the bugs, the birds, the leaves, they're all audible in this scene because Baxter is happy. The next example is the polar opposite of peaceful. It is utter distress and horror. There's a moment where Baxter is under extreme stress and he begins to hear the sounds of dogs barking, hollering, and whimpering. The context of this scene I'll explain later in the video, but this moment really startled me. Not only because of a big character moment, but it makes you think about dogs in a different way. It makes you sympathize with pain they may have felt in the past that they aren't really capable of understanding. The sound of angry, scared, or hurt dogs is one that no one likes to hear, but this film utilizes it to draw out some relatability from Baxter's character. This makes the movie take a deeper tone. This is the climax of the first story Baxter tells, and it would move on to the next soon after. This film takes on a narrative structure that's almost sort of unusual, but makes sense alongside the choice of writing a story that's almost episodic. The story is told in three acts that are separated based on who Baxter's owner is. The first is called My Life with the Old Lady, and it establishes not only the beginning of Baxter's story, but also how the film decides to write a dog's thoughts. The second is called Happy Days, and takes place directly after the first act. This goes deeper into the exploration of a dog's attachment to their owners and their firm hatred of change. The third is called A Human Who's Just Like Me, and introduces an owner that thinks similarly to how Baxter does violently, objectively, and with little concern for others. Each act is teased in the act prior to it as well. In act one, Baxter watches out of an attic window of the old lady's house towards the woman who will be his next owner. He also listens to her and her husband having sex and speaks about her in a very sexual way that made me thoroughly uncomfortable, cause you know, he's a dog. They also tease the last owner of Baxter throughout the entire film. He has a dangerous obsession with Hitler and even told his crush she looked like Ava Braun and pulled out a picture of her and Hitler that he just happened to have in his pocket. If that isn't a red flag, I, I don't know what is. But he has a really cool mini bunker in a junkyard by his house. These small moments of character development serve as foreshadowing to the danger this boy poses to the story. What I love about the structure is how differently each act chooses to develop Baxter. 
It takes different problems that could confuse a normal dog and throws them right at Baxter through the story. It's a really good way to include a lot of plot elements within a short runtime of only 83 minutes. It was a really effective technique and served the story as well as the mise-en-scene. 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 This is because a dog's life is very short, so it makes sense that things would move quickly and abruptly. It not only works in that aspect, but the quick pace this movie sets makes the slow and methodical monologues from Baxter even more engaging. Part of the mise-en-scene I really wanted to talk about was Baxter's monologues. They do something really interesting with the cinematography here. They do an extreme close-up of Baxter's eyes. In other films, this would be a technique to show humanity, or a lack thereof. Like in Blade Runner, we learned that the eye is the key to distinguishing a replicant from a human. Now, it is being used on a dog. Why? Because it makes Baxter more human to us. Even though he lacks a nose, eyebrows, and ears, making us look directly into his eyes makes us listen to what he's saying. We focus on this dog who spills his guts to the camera and we look at him as more of a character rather than a cute dog, all because of his eyes. There was a moment I talked about earlier where Baxter begins to hear dogs barking and howling, and I'll elaborate on that more right now. Baxter was having a PTSD episode. His first owner, the old lady, tries to bring him into the tub with her, which triggers a warlike flashback from his time in a dog pound. This sequence is very quick and doesn't last long, but I found it very, very intriguing. It seems that what Boyvin was trying to do was make Baxter more human than dog for the sake of relatability. This could have been overdone, but I think he actually made a really great choice here. PTSD is a very human problem. Memory can be a horrible thing sometimes. And during Baxter's episode, he says, that brought back images from the past. When the present is unbearable, you can't fight back on natural thoughts. This, to me, was the best moment of character development for a dog that I've ever seen. Baxter is not just a dog anymore. He's a three-dimensional character that has a traumatic past that he is not able to overcome. This is why I love this film. Sure, dogs are cute, but in films, they're never interesting. They're just dogs. Sure, sometimes they play basketball or go on an arctic adventure, okay. But I've never seen a dog have to face his traumatic past head on. It's completely original and I love everything about it. If you haven't yet, please go watch Baxter. It's worth it.